Hello, good afternoon or good morning or good evening, wherever you are. And welcome to this uh, live streaming where we will speak about the uh, uh, new uh, motu proprio, uh, Tradiciones Custodes. As you know, on July 16, Pope Francis issued a new motu proprio with an accompanying letter called Tradiciones Custodes. This motu proprio restricts the possibilities of celebration of the traditional Latin mass. The document has raised several concerns, especially among those that have found spiritual consolation in attending the Tridentine Mass. So we will uh, discuss about this very topic and I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we can discuss with uh, uh, a very uh, exceptional group of guests that I'm going to uh, present you. Uh, we have uh, uh, from uh, Hong Kong, the Bishop Emeritus of Hong Kong, Cardinal Joseph Zen. Uh, welcome, Your Eminence. And then uh, we have uh, from uh, uh, Kazakhstan, the Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of St. Mary in Astana, Bishop Athanasius Schneider. Uh, welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you. Then uh, we have the um, president of the Roman Forum and professor of history at St. John's University, John C. Rao. Welcome. Then uh, we have uh, the uh, editor and uh, founder of the magazine Inside the Vatican, Robert Mohinihan. And you are welcome to this program. Thank you very much. And uh, then uh, we have uh, the uh, president of the Una Voce International Federation, Felipe Alanis Suarez. Uh, you are also very welcome to this program. Thank you so much. So, and then also we are waiting for the former president of the Una Voce Federation, James Bogle, that uh, is not yet connected with us, but I hope it will be very soon. So uh, I want to uh, start uh, with uh, Cardinal Zen. Uh, your Eminence, um, in your uh, Twitter, uh, you said this, the document, so Tradiciones Custodes, obviously sees not only irregular irregularities in the execution of Sumorum Pontificum, but considers the very existence of a parallel right to be an evil. Don't paragraph uh, five and six of article three, article four and five clearly wish for the death of the groups, but even in that case, can the anti-Ratzinger gentleman of the Vatican be patient to allow the Trinity Mass to die only after the death of Benedict XVI, instead of inflicting such humiliation on the venerable Pope Emeritus. So why, why can you comment on, the, on these words? Yeah, uh, I think uh, my words are uh, the strong, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, the cause is uh, very important uh, because uh, uh, in this document, I really see uh, a insinuation, uh, but not uh, explicit in, you know, not in explicit words, uh, but uh, uh, it seems that uh, uh, they are hoping uh, for the uh, uh, disappearance of this uh, 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 traditional way of uh, uh, having uh, the, the Eucharist. Uh, uh, so it's not only uh, to, uh, to regulate, uh, but uh, a process to, to have it uh, to disappear. Uh, that's very very worrying uh, because uh, uh, I think it's something uh, very precious and uh, uh, very beneficial for the uh, the, the, uh, the the piety and, and of, of uh, uh, nourishment of faith, uh, uh, which many people uh, have from this uh, 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 devotion to the to the traditional mass. Uh. And so uh, I, I agree that. Uh, the things may uh, should proceed uh, regularly. Uh, I don't know if anywhere 
uh, there are problems, and then surely bishops must uh, try to, to put everything in order. Huh? But uh, the, uh, I, I, I really cannot uh, deny that there is a insinuation that uh, it's simply not good to have that mass. Huh? And that's very worrying. Thank you, Your Eminence. And I want to uh, go to uh, uh, Bishop Schneider, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, uh, and I want also to uh, quote from uh, one of your last interview uh, in uh, appear in your Twitter, uh, a phrase that you say uh, in your interview for The Remnant. And you say, in the document on human fraternity signed in Abu Dhabi on February 4, 2019, Pope Francis embraces the diversity of religions, whereas in his new motu proprio, he resolutely rejects the diversity of liturgical forms in the Roman rite. So uh, why for you there is this difference of approach? I, I think it is evident uh, contradiction when Pope Francis uh, welcomes and supports the, the diversity of religions even, which is in itself already dubious because there is only one religion built by God, this is the Christianity, the Catholic Church, and the only Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, at the same time, he rejects categorically the diversity of liturgical forms inside the Roman rite. So it is, and even so that after the council, the general attitude and atmosphere in the church, as in the Novus Ordo masses, was the, the welcoming of diversity of local traditions, even inside the possibility of the Roman rite itself. And it is practiced also in different places with the approval of the Holy See that the new mass is celebrated with many positions of local bishops' conference in Africa and other places in different uh, forms also. But there is already inside the Novus Ordo a diversity of manner of celebrations. And therefore, it is a question why do not permit the, the venerable traditional form of the Roman rite, which was not created by, the, by Pope Pius V, but which existed already almost the same form before Pius V and Council of Trent. It was a, a very traditional form and brought so many fruits of holiness. And now also, it's, uh, this is a question why uh, this form now should be uh, so categorically rejected. And it seems that there is a, an ideological reason behind. So it's a rejection of the tradition itself in some way. It is a rejection of what is clear, what is more uh, precise, more, which is containing more uh, expressions of reverence, of sacredness, adoration, which is the traditional form objectively. And so it is behind, to my opinion, an, an ideological stance. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. And I now am able also to uh, welcome Mr. Uh, James Bogle that uh, can finally uh, be with us. Uh, he's the former president of Una Voce. Thank you for joining this program. Uh, then uh, I want to go to now to John uh, C. Rao, and I want to ask him uh, about the uh, reaction, uh, if he can summarize the reaction to this uh, new document in the uh, United States. Uh, because I saw that there were some kind of very harsh and strong reaction against this document, but it seems that some bishops uh, were um, favor favorable to continue the status quo uh, before the Traditionis Custodes. So can you uh, 
uh, tell us a little about uh, what is the uh, situation in your country? Uh, yes, uh, well, I should perhaps preface what I have to say by indicating that this is not 1969, this is not 1984 with the first indult, this is not 1988, this is not even 2007. You have a vibrant Tridentine community uh, that exercises its, um, its, 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 uh, uh, its, its uh, rights in a variety of different forms, and they are, none of them, ready to give up the battle. It is absolutely true that there are a number of bishops that are favorable, extremely favorable. Here in New York, the Cardinal has said nothing. Masses continue as usual. There is even the possibility of a church being given to one of the, um, uh, one of the uh, religious orders that have been established. There's nothing that indicates that there's going to be an end to the Mass here. Even if there were, and um, I, I doubt in many places uh, that, um, that are, are very, very vigorous in their support of the Mass that there's going to be uh, a, um, an abandonment by the bishop of the traditionalists, we're ready to fight. We're ready to fight. People are not going to give in. Uh, the traditionalist parishes have boomed in the midst of this crisis of the past 18 months. Uh, the attendance at the church that I go to has gone up at least twofold. Many places talk about uh, threefold increases so that it's vigorous here and we're, we're going to battle. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, I will have you uh, later. And uh, I, I want to uh, go to uh, Robert, um, and I, because I, there is a, a very specific topic that uh, it was touched in um, some Italian newspaper and also from France. And I want to show you one Twitter from uh, Robert uh, that say, Father Bart, that is uh, chaplain for the Sumorum Pontificum pilgrimage, not all involved with the decision that led to the papal edict against the traditional mass. As he reveals, the Italian bishops and a couple of Italian cardinals in the Curia were at the origin and the moving force behind this document. So uh, can you uh, confirm uh, what you say in this Twitter and uh, can you give us a little more uh, detail about this? <clears throat> well, uh... Monsignor Barth is well informed. If you ask me to confirm the facts that he refers to, I rely on him. We always have to understand that the Vatican takes decisions through a process of consultation and someone who is the Pope listens to advice from more progressive and more conservative advisors. Under Pope Benedict, Pope Benedict took the decision to say, I would like to support the continual celebration of what I will call the extraordinary rite. It was venerable, it was revered, it was for centuries the right of the Catholic Church, and I think we must continue to venerate it. But he said that in opposition to many more progressive bishops, cardinals, liturgists who opposed him. So when he made that decision in 2007, he did it against a lot of opposition. Pope Francis has taken this decision and Monsignor Barth tells us that he was pushed to this decision by some of his more progressive advisors, particularly Italian bishops, but of course also in other countries. I would like to state that I myself do not understand the entire process here. And I wanted to bring to your attention a couple of facts. The Pope went into the hospital on July 4th. He had surgery and he was under anesthesia, general anesthesia. He came out of that on the 5th and the 6th of July. He was beginning to recover. He was supposed to come back to the Vatican on the 7th or the 8th of July, they kept him another several days. He came back to the Vatican after 10 days in the hospital on the 14th of July. On the 15th of July, he rested, and on the morning of the 16th of July, this document was released. I have a doubt about how much the Pope followed the 
publication of this document, how much control he had over it. And I would like some response from the Vatican confirming that the Pope was fully aware and fully in, in, uh, in behind the publication of this document, which evidently went through a couple of versions. And um, there's other doubts I have about this document. Of course, the whole question is, to what extent is it is it binding, and to what extent is to Catholics who are loyal to, to the magisterium bound to obey the, the the document itself? So, in in Article One, the document says the liturgical books promulgated by Saint Paul the Sixth and Saint John Paul the Second in conformity with the decrees of Vatican Council Two. That phrase I have a doubt about. Are the books promulgated by St. Paul VI and St. John Paul II fully in conformity with the decrees of Vatican Council II? This has been argued for 60 years. We are all aware that Vatican Council II itself was contested by more conservative bishops and more progressive bishops who later publicly stated they had tried to get their positions inserted into passages of the council documents so that after the council, they could carry them forward in a very progressive or indeed revolutionary way. So what, what is clear is there's a battle over the liturgy and a battle over what he calls the lakes orandi, the, the law of praying of the Roman rite, in which certain people want to make a kind of break with our past and other people like Pope Benedict, who is still alive, would like to keep in, in harmony with, in coherence with our past. So we are in the presence of a battle, a theological battle, a battle over the faith. And this particular document is one more step in that process. Thank you, thank you, Robert. And I want to go to uh, Felipe Alanis Suarez, uh, and I want to ask him what was the uh, can, if you can summarize the reaction of Una Voce to this document. Thank you, thank you, Aurelio. Well, um, the first reaction uh, about the, on the document from from the Federation is obviously a reaction of sadness um, for for multiple reasons. Uh, the first one, obviously because we see this document as a very unjust uh, way to, to, to restrict the access of the Latin mass, which is um, nourishing the faith from many people around the, around the world. So it, it, for us, it's like, a, like a putting a, a new obstacle uh, to the people who is willing to, to pray on, on, on silence, in silence and, and, and to to, to, to people devote to the, to the traditional uh, liturgy. But also because the, the whole document is justified on a, on a lie. And in, I mean, uh, the whole reasons or the only reason uh, the document expressed is this kind of misbehavior or this kind of problematic attitudes from the general speaking uh, traditionally uh, world. So it, it speaks a lot about the lack of um, understanding about who is going to the mass and why. I mean, they are, uh, instead of actually doing a, a deep uh, analysis of why people is, 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 is attending the mass, why new young people, why families are going now to, to the mass, uh, and find that the real reasons of that, uh, the document is just, uh, giving a label to, to the traditional people like uh, some rebels uh, that are against the Pope and we should avoid them to, to, to make them uh, grow, right? Which, which is, is, uh, it, it is false. I mean, the, the people who is attending the, the, the mass, uh, <clears throat> obviously like in, in any other place on the, on the church, range from many different mentalities, attitudes, uh, backgrounds, so it's, it's a very Catholic uh, people in the, in, in the sense that it came from, the people came from, from, from multiple backgrounds. 
And the real reason that the, the mass is attracting the people is in, 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 in some sense, because it is an answer for our spiritual searching of these so difficult times. So to, to find us in, 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 a, in a moment of confusion and, and when everything is disposable in, in, in our daily lives and this uh, hysteric rhythm of work or um, news in the media, the mass becomes like a, a, our home on the time, right? So in, in, in a temporal perspective, we found in, in, in the mass a place where we can connect to, to, to our fathers, but also to, 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 to understand that we are connected to the whole church. And, and for that reason, the document was uh, in some degree uh, an, an aggressive uh, response from, from some courier uh, officers, I, I would suppose, um, that, uh, that we understand that also creates a, a temporary uh, vacuum uh, not only canonical, but uh, in, 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 the, in the way that the bishops are going to, to act uh, since now when the groups of people who will be growing anyway uh, start to, to request the mass uh, in their dioceses. So we need to, we need, we need to take a, a pause as well, maybe, and, and, and to think without um, being visceral about the, the reactions and how are we going to keep uh, pushing uh, to, to share this treasure of the mass to, to more and more people. Thank you. And um, I, I want to go to uh, James Bogle. And uh, um, I want to ask you, you are a person that uh, is in this uh, fight for the traditional Latin mass for many years. So uh, I want to, um, to give us an assessment. Wh where are now, where are we now? What, what, how you assess the situation now respect of some decades ago? What, what, what is for you the, 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 the health of the traditional Latin mass? Well, thank you very much, Aurelia, and uh, <clears throat> your, uh, your eminence, um... Uh, Your Excellency and uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to participate. Um, can I just preface my remarks by saying um, one thing that is, uh, I'm afraid, consistently forgotten uh, in this whole debate is that we are talking about one right of the Catholic Church, the Roman right, and what I call the Pauline right, which is the right that was introduced in 1970. There are 22 other rights in the Catholic Church, which are consistently left out of the discussion. And <clears throat> you will often hear people refer to the, uh, the new and old right as if there were no other rights in the Catholic Church. Uh, so um, it's not the extraordinary right or the ordinary right, because there is no ordinary or extraordinary right of the Catholic Church. There are 23 or 24 such rights. What we're talking about is the Roman right and a right, whatever you want to call it, was introduced in 1970. The terms ordinary and extraordinary forms of the Roman right is now one of the things that Pope Francis has got rid of in his motu proprio by uh, <clears throat> rescinding the motu proprio of Pope uh, Benedict XVI. Uh, so that uh, expression is no longer valid. Um, I... Uh, didn't like using it anyway because it's uh, in itself very odd for a 2000 year old right to wit the Roman right to be re to be regarded as in any way extraordinary. However, be that as it may, that has gone. What we have now is a discussion about the traditional ancient Roman right, which by the way, is also not tridentine. All that Pius V did was uh, consolidate what was already the Roman right and had been for uh, the best, better part of 1500 years before Pius V. So uh, we can call it the Usus Antiquio, we can call it the Old Right, we can call it the Roman Right, we can, can call it uh, the Gregorian Right or even earlier, uh, but it's not Tridentine and it's not extraordinary. Uh, so I think we should bear that in mind in this discussion because uh, a lot of people think that there is only one right in the Catholic Church. Uh, and that is the Roman right. That is incorrect. 
I think we also need to bear in mind that the differences between the various Greek rites, for example, the liturgy of St. James, the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, and the liturgy of uh, St. Basil, is really only a few sentences. Uh, and, if, and yet those are regarded as, as, as different rites, uh, certainly by the, uh, the Eastern Church and by the Eastern Orthodox. Uh, so on that basis, however you spin it, what uh, the right that was introduced in 1970 by Paul, Pope Paul VI is a completely new right. Uh, and particularly Eucharistic prayers two, three, and four are completely novel inventions invented by Archbishop Annabali Bonini uh, and his colleagues when they confected the, uh, uh, the Pauline rite of 1970 in a very expensive Swiss hotel in between expensive courses and fine wines. This is not the same way in which most of, or indeed all of the other rites of the Catholic Church came into existence. Uh, those rites came into existence through the prayers and work of uh, saintly and holy men uh, after prayer, fasting, penance, uh, not after expensive lunches and dinners in a Swiss hotel. Um, but be that as it may, the Pope obviously has uh, the power to uh, authorize a new uh, right. The normal way in which uh, liturgical rights appear is not from the top down, but from the bottom up, uh, and also out of ancient and traditional forms of worship. So for example, uh, the Roman rite, which according to most liturgical scholars is the oldest rite in the Christian church, older than the Greek rites, goes back to the, uh, the Jewish temple worship. So it is, that's how old it is. The idea that any prelate or pope can abolish such a right is obviously untenable, both in law, in canon law, and in theology. Now, I should just add, my position is, I am a barrister, that's a, uh, what you would call in uh, America a trial attorney, uh, and have been for 30 years. I'm a convert from the uh, uh, Church of England uh, of some 30, nearly 40 years standing, and I've been going to the traditional mass since 1988. Before that, I went to the Pauline Rite. Uh, and uh, I have been able to make comparisons between the two, having lived them both. Uh, I've also been president of Una Voce before my colleague and friend Felipe Alanis. And uh, uh, so I, I've been dealing with this matter for a very long time. And I've heard all of the arguments many times over. The, the, the position in, in my mind, and I've discussed this with numerous can, uh, uh, canon lawyers and theologians of many of very um, well-recognized standing uh, is that uh, uh, the motu proprio traditionis custode uh, is insofar as it attempts to limit the uh, saying and uh, celebrating of the uh, traditional Roman rite is ultra vires. It's not a power that any body uh, can have to, to uh, uh, overshadow what has been established by the church for the for most of 2000 years. Um, but I, I think it's also helpful to, uh, uh, in the first number of years, uh, a committee of the Society of England and Wales. And I would uh, recommend to all of you and to those who are listening to look at the um, that particular website, you will see an analysis by canon lawyers uh, of the position. And a couple of points stick out, which I think would be um, useful to relate. First of all, uh, the right of priests to celebrate privately, the older officers, the other sacraments, the older rituale are completely unrestricted by traditionis. Uh, the, uh, the right of priests to celebrate is remains intact because traditionis does not abrogate in my opinion, neither could it abrogate, but as a matter of fact, it doesn't abrogate the 1962 missile, still less the missiles that preceded 1962, including the 1954 um, uh, liturgical rites. Uh, otherwise, if that were not so, it could not allow it to be said in certain circumstances. So that remains intact. Uh, and the use in relation to parish churches uh, only applies, according to uh, traditionis to authorize groups such as came into existence in the course of the formal application of Samoran Pontificate. 
and therefore those other than those belonging to groups may still hear and celebrate the traditional mass in Paris. Uh, sorry, Jane, thank you. Can you conclude so that we can uh, uh, go to the other points? Aurelia, I'm very nearly yeah. finished them. Uh, if you let allow me to finish, um, the uh, uh, so uh, the uh, restrictions are perhaps less than some people think they are. The position in England and Wales is that every bishop bar one has continued to allow uh, the celebration of the traditional mass in exactly the same way that it was before uh, Traditionis was issued. Only one uh, bishop has decided to withdraw all permissions. And most of the bishops gave and granted permissions immediately. So I think to follow on from what John Rao was saying, uh, uh, and I agree entirely with what John was saying, uh, the reaction to is, is, is and has been not to shy away from the traditional mass, but in fact, to increase attendance at the traditional mass. The Latin Mass Society has uh, indicated that it has had a huge surge uh, in applications for membership. And I think that with the greatest of respect to His Holiness, uh, the result is going to be a greater, not a lesser interest in the traditional mass. So uh, uh, that, that's really what I wanted to say in relation to uh, traditionis. But also bear in mind, please, that we are not talking about a, uh, anything other than a traditional rite of mass that has existed for most of the history of the Catholic Church. And that is significant. Thank you. Thank you. Then, of course, uh, you uh, we, we, you will uh, uh, speak later. And then, before going to Cardinal Zen, I want to show you we are in uh, YouTube, Ritorno a Itaca, in my Twitter account, Aurelio Porfiri, and in my fan fan page, Aurelio Porfiri. So please check this if you want to be always updated. We will make live streaming in Italian and English, so you can follow us. Uh, here, if you want to be always updated, you can go on Telegram and sign on my Telegram uh, channel, uh, Aurelio Porfiri. I want also to give you two uh, little uh, advice before going to the Cardinal, um, that uh, uh, I want to uh, let you know about uh, this book of mine, A Future in Tradition, Remembering Michael Davis, that is published in English and also Mr. Bogle uh, is interviewed inside this book and is available on Amazon in uh, paperback, in ebook and also in other bookstore. Then I want to tell you that soon will be available from, Archib from Bishop Schneider, the Catholic Mass ways to reestablish God at the center of liturgy is already in pre-order in Amazon. Uh, even here is written October 1st, 2021, will not be that the date, will be the beginning of 2022, but the book uh, it will be a very important book uh, for the issue of liturgy and uh, the new, uh, new mass, Novus Ordo and Betus Ordo. And I want also to tell you that uh, Cardinal Zen, uh, with my help, uh, is writing his autobiography and that will be released at the beginning also of 2022 with the help of God and will be called God as is being good to me, will be called God as being good to me. So uh, I just tell you about these important books and I hope you can uh, get them at your convenience. Now, Cardinal Zen, you want to say something after what uh, James Bogle has said, so I give you the word and please. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to go back to what uh, 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 Robert said. Uh, uh, it seems that uh, the whole thing, this big storm, this attack against uh, the Trident Hamas, uh, may come from, uh, he says, uh, Italian bishops. Uh? Uh, uh, I, I, I even doubt that, that uh, uh, I don't know, may, may not even be uh, the situation in Italy. I, I, I'm afraid the, the initiative may come uh, uh, from the Roman Curia, uh, even more precisely from the Secretary of State, uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, this motu proprio, uh, uh, the, uh, 
I, I don't think it's a really appropriate from the Holy Father. Uh, uh, from my own experience uh, about what happens to China. Uh, and, and so uh, you, you, you can see that uh, uh, the, the Secretariat uh, is taking the place of uh, other uh, competent uh, uh, department of the Holy See. Uh, uh, they even uh, uh, try to, uh, to take away the, the private masses in uh, St. Peter's. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, it, such a big storm, a big uh, attack uh, uh, could be spared to the whole church. Uh, actually, even in Hong Kong, uh, we, uh, uh, we have a group uh, uh, very uh, uh, fun uh, of this mass and uh, uh, also a constant uh, audience. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but there is uh, no problem here, even after this motu proprio, uh, the authority, uh, the diocese authority uh, are saying that we have nothing to change because everything uh, was very orderly. Uh, and so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it's important, uh, surely, for us to to go to the, uh, the 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 real substance of the uh, the problem, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the the precious heritage in the church uh, uh, and uh, uh, the the real uh, increase uh, of our devotion to the blessed sacrament. Uh, but I think uh, uh, we may also. A spare uh, much uh, trouble if uh, we go to the uh, to the origin of uh, this trouble. Huh? Uh, so I think uh, uh, I, I really uh, uh, have not uh, any uh, information uh, or, or direct uh, um, involvement in this so-called consultation huh? and. Uh, uh, I am uh, one of the cardinals here alive, uh, and uh, I've been uh, also a member of the, the, con the, the Congregation for uh, Divine Worship. Uh, and uh, all these things which uh, are about the, the worship, uh, the piety, uh, uh, now uh, everything is an enhanced of the Secretary of State. Uh, and uh, I really would like to, uh, to have... Uh, uh, a, a, a direct conversation with the Holy Father uh, about uh, what he thinks about uh, uh, this this problem, uh, 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 because uh, uh, even about the big question of the, how they deal with uh, the church in China, uh, uh, I'm afraid that uh, what happens uh, does not come uh, from the Holy Father, uh, but uh, uh, from the people around him, uh, and especially uh, the. Uh, the Secretary of State. Uh, and so uh, even uh, uh, before uh, going to this uh, important uh, internal matter about uh, uh, how we, we see uh, this uh, other form of, uh, of the Roman right, uh, uh, I think uh, we have to also uh, pay attention on uh, from where it comes uh, and uh, let those people uh, uh, be in some way uh, answer uh, 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 to answer to our questions, uh, and uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, we should uh, put all this uh, burden on the Holy Father because uh, uh, I, I, I don't think uh, it comes uh, directly from the Holy Father, uh, and so uh, maybe we 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 could. Uh, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, make uh, this big storm uh, a, a small one, because uh, uh, here, uh, we people present here, we represent a, a big portion of the, of the church. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, the effect of the, uh, the mother propia may uh, not be that devastating. Huh? And surely in our diocese, I'm very happy that uh, the author authorities said that uh, we have nothing really to change because uh, everything is all right. Uh, uh, we have nothing against uh, uh, the reform. Uh, and uh, uh, this group uh, who love this uh, other form uh, 
uh, of the liturgy. Uh, they, ha they have no objection uh, against uh, uh, the, the mass form uh, after the, the ecumenical council, and they have nothing at all against uh, the ecum ecumenical council. They are very docile people, very uh, kind people, and uh, they just love this mass because uh, it had their piety. Uh, and so uh, maybe uh, if anybody has some more information about uh, uh, the, the origin of all this storm, uh, uh, it may uh, spare us uh, uh, too much uh, discussion about something uh, which I think uh, should be obvious uh, that this uh, form of the liturgy is uh, very uh, uh, conducive uh, to piety mm -hmm. uh, and uh, even to strengthen the, 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 the faith. Huh? And so uh, I, I would like to hear some uh, more information because we are far away. Huh? The Holy Father talks very much, very, but he, we are very much in the disadvantage. And so, so I hope maybe you can have uh, some more information uh, to, uh, to, for my con consolation. Thank you, Your Eminence. And so I want to go to Bishop Schneider. Uh, um, Your Excellency, you can uh, listen to this different opinion about the origin of the motu proprio, and also now Cardinal Zen, uh, you know, he said that maybe it's uh, more an initiative of the Secretary of State uh, than of the Holy Father, and... Uh, so, but what 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 is your opinion about this? What, what from from you? What is the the the, the, the origin uh, from where this motu proprio come? Uh, that uh, we have not the the documentation and the proofs, and this is, for my opinion, a secondary aspect, because uh, according to the church law and to the reason. Uh, since uh, this is a document of the Pope and the Holy See published this with the signature of the Pope, it's a motu proprio, and then it's a personal letter, the accompanying letter of the Pope is personal. So, and we have to accept this is a document of the Pope until uh, there will be a contrary proof from the Holy See, a dementi. And since it's not yet, we have simply to accept this is a document of the Pope. And to concentrate, uh, not to the, I think it's not so helpful to examine who was the, like the counselor uh, and advisor, but to, to take the, the, the content of these two documents of the motu proprio and the accompanying letter and to express our concerns with respect to the Pope, and he is the author of the two documents. And since it's a motu proprio, it's not uh, another, this is his own initiative, what he says, we have to, to state uh, the, in, the dangers of these two documents, which is, to my opinion, the deepest wound and uh, error of these documents. It is an evident rupture with, with the tradition of the church, it's simply to, uh, to reject what was before 1970 in the liturgy. And this is very dangerous. When you reject categorically what was all the tradition of the liturgy, which the saints celebrated and the Roman church and the popes praised this specific form, and you reject this categorically it's, it, as something uh, dangerous, it is a problem, this attitude, it's in itself a problem, the, the rupture. And uh, this is also not only uh, connecting, we have to recognize this to the form of celebration, but it is connected with the faith, which expresses the traditional right. It expressing more clearly the sacrificial character, the theocentrical, the adoration, the mystery itself. Whereas the Novus Ordo is more in the tendency to stress a kind of more anthropocentric or colloquial and more the banquet 
aspect. So this is, uh, we have to recognize these differences. And now we see the rejection of the, the traditional liturgy. It's also touching the aspect of our faith in the fullness of the truth, the Catholic truth about the Holy Mass as the primarily substantial, essential aspect of the sacrifice, which of course con contains also the aspect of Holy Communion, it's evident, but the main aspect and the adoration of God, the theocentrism. This is very important. I repeat, we have to stress this rupture danger. Thank you, Your Excellency. And uh, I want to uh, go to. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I want to go to uh, John C. Rao. And uh, I want to show this question and have his comment on this question. Uh, Stephen Johnson say, I often wonder if this divide within the Latin or Roman rite would ever exist had the mass of Paul VI fallen more in line with the principles laid out in Sacrosanctum Concilium. So uh, what, what do you think of this point? Uh, the, the problem with the traditional Latin mass is bigger because the Novus Ordo is in a situation of decay or, or what? Oh, to try to tackle that, I don't exactly know where to begin to tackle that whole question. Um, first of all, perhaps what I should do is just make some general comments, which may altogether add up to answering the question. But uh, one thing that I think is extremely important to remember uh, in the current context, also with regard to bishops' reactions to this motu proprio in the United States, is that it could well be in many dioceses the coup de grace to seminary life. I just take New York as an example. Most of the seminarians, if not all of the seminarians in Dunwoody want to say the traditional mass. And if it were made known to them that that would not be a possibility for them to do in the future, they're just simply not going to go any longer to the mainline seminaries. I don't think anyone was ordained in New York this year. I may be wrong, maybe it was one person, but most of the people who are young people see in the traditional mass what they want to do and what uh, what uh, fulfills their role as, as priests. Uh, the attendance at the, um, the mainline masses uh, over the course of the past disaster of the last 18 months has plunged while the traditional mass attendance has soared. And that's another indication of the fact that the population here, the practicing population, understands really where it is that uh, the, the uh, historic faith is being preserved. Um, again, uh, and forgive me if I'm not answering your question directly, but there's one other thing I want to say, which I think is in line with what Bishop Schneider was talking about, but I want to put this in a broad historical perspective. What we've seen in the entire uh, ecclesiology that has been promoted by the progressives uh, at the time of Vatican Council and then in the post-conciliar period and then in the current pontificate, perhaps more than anything else, um, is an effort to destroy all of the foundations of, of papal power, legitimate papal power, and then replace them with an emphasis just simply on personal will. And as far as I can see, this just is in line with the entire development of the modern world, beginning with nominalism uh, in, the, uh, in the 13th century onwards, uh, because of the fact that you've got there uh, a disdain for the revealed truth, uh, replaced by an emphasis on a will, which is claimed to be connected with the will of God, but which always involves the, the, um, the enforcement of whoever's will is strongest. And what we've got now is, in the church, the triumph of the will. Um, rather than it being an emphasis upon uh, the um, obedience to the historical foundations of the faith and everything that the Lex Orandi has taught us through the centuries, what we've got is a kind of fascist emphasis upon my will, often identified as a prophetic voice of the Holy Spirit, um, which dominates everything. And it's, it's this spirit which has made of the right of Paul VI of 1970, not one right, but a thousand rights, a right that's different according to each priest 
who says the mass um, in every given parish church around the globe. Uh, there's, it's, 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 there's a thousand, a million different kinds of Roman rites uh, that, uh, that don't reflect the historical tradition of the church. Thank you, thank you for your uh, yeah, analysis. Yeah. And uh, uh, I want to go to uh, Felipe and uh, I want to ask you a question that uh, maybe is uh, a little, uh, maybe not very nice, but I think it should be asked. And is this, uh, even today in Italy appear a comment from a very prominent scholar of liturgy that say that the young people going to the uh, Latin mass, they have uh, mental problems. Uh, you know, some kind of uh, mental issues uh, uh, that is also in line with what, the, you know, the rigid uh, uh, things like this. So can you, uh, you have this international uh, association, so can you give your uh, assessment of this kind of comment? For sure. Well, first of all, to say that people with mental illness, I mean, they live in, in everywhere, so... Obviously, um, you will find problematic people within the traditional world, of course, uh, but you will also find them in any other place uh, outside, outside of it. Um, from my perspective, I, I, can, I can share you maybe some kind of profiles of the people who is at attracted to the traditional mass and that is getting involved with the federation. So, um, the people involved in the different or, or that are attached to the traditional mass uh, and they have been coming in the recent years, perhaps even not so recently, but uh, I, I may count as, as one of them, um, coming from a little bit earlier from, from the Sumoran Pontificum era, um, are people who, who is discovering a treasure in, in, in the church. So, the people is, is, is very happy to, to find this, this way of, of praying, but mostly because we can find the sense of sacredness that is lacking in any other place uh, or, or is hide, hidden in, 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 in the practice of the no sort of mass, uh, in, in the real practice of it. So what in, in, in the no sort of could be, as someone said, a possibility uh, in the traditional mass is a reality that we live Sunday after Sunday and... and, 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 and uh, many people day after day on, on the mass. So the profile is, is people from all the different spectrum of life, people who are students or uh, women that are mothers and, and have their children and want to, to, to get them approaching to, to, to God. And we have people working on, on the government and in, in, in any places. There are not like a, a one-size-fits-all a one size fit all. Uh, about uh, a, pro a profile, a specific profile um, from, from back different back backgrounds. What is true is that the people is looking for the sacredness, which is something that we really need in, in, in these times. So we don't care about, most of the time, we don't care about the vintage <laughs> uh, discussions or past discussions about uh, even the council itself is, is is not on the plate anymore in the day-to-day -day discussion discussions. So people is not coming because they are uh, <clears throat> rejecting the Pope or uh, thinking in a conspiracy worldwide uh, about I don't know. Even politics are outside of the scope most of the time, uh, and and people are uh, simple people, simple Catholics that wants to get a life of a sacramental nourishing, and 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 that's it and our expectations or our means is uh, our ideal world is to live a simple life as a simple Catholic, but nourishing our life with the, with the traditional mass. So how difficult could that be? Um, and, and I think personally that the bishops are getting, are noticing this. And this is the reason why most of them have been expressing um, their friendship or, or not the, even perhaps not in all the case friendship, but they allow this movement to, to go uh, in, in, in their diocese. Even though it is important to say there remains some ideological, um, um, I would say, produced 
uh, as Bishop Snyder also mentioned. And, and we have seen in some cases, like by example, in this case of uh, Alajuela in Costa Rica, where the bishop Im immediately, he, he, he just um, uh, canceled the mass and said that there weren't any group on the, on the diocese, even though he knew that it, it, there was a group uh, attending the traditional mass for years now. And they even, uh, they even uh, restrict the use of the Latin of Ad Orientem or Evergurian chant on, in, on, on the Novus Ordo. So it is a reaction full of, uh, it was a reaction full of, um, I would say, prejudices. And, and without taking in account the real uh, uh, care, without taking care for, for their flock. So we will see this kind of uh, issues coming from different countries. Uh, thanks God is only the minority of them. And what something that I think, and, and just to, to, to finish my, <clears throat> my ideas, is that uh, this process or these uh, difficulties that we are now passing by um, it require us to be more outspoken of the positive things that the people that we are finding in the, in the traditional mass. We need to be more propositive and many people, many people that, want, uh, that weren't aware of the traditional mass are not thinking or asking questions about why, why people this is still coming there going there and, 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 and then our role is also to, to underscore the, the benefits, the spiritual benefits, the richness of the traditional mass. So. Thank you, thank you. And I, I want to uh, go to Robert and uh, ask him uh, a question that, uh, in, uh, a question that uh, then I want also comment from James after him. So first, first Robert. So you have uh, talked a lot in your uh, articles before about uh, Archbishop uh, Annibale Budnini, that was the uh, was the core of the liturgical reform. And uh, I, I want to tell you something that uh, someone told me about uh, this new motu proprio. And uh, someone told me, oh, but you know, the Pope uh, is not afraid about the mass the, the traditional mass in itself, but he's afraid of what is, impli what is implied in the mass, uh, because it's not only uh, the prayers, or but it's, there is also, you know, the, the lex credendi that is implied in this lex orandi, you know, so all the tradition, the traditional theology, the traditional way of praying, uh, all that is, according to some people, is against the, the the church of the council no so it's against the what, what we should uh, believe uh, now so what what do you, what do you think about this comment do you think there is some truth yes of course there's some truth to it do you hear me yeah yes very well um you know i have to summarize now and i had a lot of thoughts here the remarks of cardinal zen uh, were very moving and uh I, I appreciate very much the kind of uh, peacefulness of his, of his faith in the midst of so many problems. And he was concerned about whether the Pope, who he has seen put under pressure in other situations, whether in this situation also was put under pressure. And he said, I'd like to know, would this really come from the Secretary of State, bypassing really the liturgy congregation, etc." And then Bishop Schneider made some very profound remarks about the, the fact of the sacrifice of the Mass, the, the fact that it's uh, participating in some way in the action of Christ himself. And that gets to your question again on the Lex Credendi. We somehow believe that the center of human history is the action and life and person of Christ. And the Church has always kept that as the center, Christocentric faith. There's been a tendency in the modern period to try to diminish that out of a kind of secularism, secular humanism. And it's not entirely wrong to engage with the world. It's not entirely wrong to recognize the, the greatness of the human person made in the image and likeness of God. But this effort to entirely prevent any longer a, a love of Christ and a recognition of his 
saving action is the is the exaggeration of a secular humanism, which very badly would like all those elements that the old mass represents no longer to be present. Whether the new mass diminishes that is an argument and whether Bunini intentionally desired that is also an argument. I've got the, I've been reading the, uh, the memoirs of Louis Bouillet and he did not like Bunini, but he worked with Bunini and he said that there were all sorts of, there were all sorts of negotiations and, uh, and um, struggles, just as there probably has been a struggle over this motu, over this motu proprio of Pope Francis, and probably it's my job to find out more about it. But Pope Francis himself is a kind of mystery because, as I've already written in the past, he has spoken in a beautiful way about the liturgy, the Eastern liturgy, which is very similar to the old Latin liturgy. He says in the Orthodox churches, he said this on July 28, 2013, on the airplane coming back from Brazil to the Vatican. And I actually met him in the very next couple of days after he came back to Rome. And he said, they have retained, the Orthodox churches have retained that pristine liturgy. Pristine, I think also implying ancient, pristine liturgy. So he liked the Orthodox ancient liturgy, which is so beautiful, he said. We have lost some of the sense of adoration, he said, about the Catholic liturgy. He said the Orthodox preserved it. They praise God. They adore God. They sing. Time does not matter. God is at the center. And he said it is something that does us much good. We need this renewal, this fresh air from the East, this light from the East. How could this man who showed such sensitivity for the divine presence, for the sense of adoration, embrace in these very drastic and narrow terms, a liturgy which someone just said is now a, a hundred or a thousand different rites because each priest chooses his own form of it. In other words, something doesn't fit. Cardinal Burke, when he analyzed this document said, it's a very strange document. There is no vacatio legis. That means a time when the law is not yet in effect. He could have said this law will take effect in November or in January, but he says it takes effect today. You don't do something like that unless it's a very emotional and drastic and authoritarian act. I still wonder to what extent Pope Francis is entirely informed about many of the things that were said today. Philippe said some wonderful things about these Catholics who attend the old liturgy, who simply want that sense of adoration that the Pope himself spoke about. They don't want to break with Rome. They don't want to break with Pope Francis. They don't want to have a battle over Bunini. They want to attend a mass where they sense the presence of Christ. And um, some something about this document strikes me as a document they were under pressure to put out and perhaps connected in some way with this global reset that we're about to experience in coming months. As if the old mass was an impediment in some way to this new secular humanist order that we all are now facing. Thank you, thank you, Robert, for your comment. So I go to James uh, to answer the same question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Aurelio, and, and while I'm at it, thank you very much for organizing this uh, uh, this uh, television viewing, uh, which I think is very important. But um, if it hasn't already been said, can I also please thank very warmly and congratulate both uh, His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Zen, and uh, His Excellency uh, Bishop Schneider for their very courageous and very important stand, uh, not only on the... Uh, on the traditional liturgy, but also on many other issues. We all know from reading the papers, uh, Your Eminence, your contribution there in Hong Kong for uh, freedom, religious freedom, political rights, uh, human rights and democracy. Thank you very much for what you are doing there. But as far as the con problem that we're dealing with today, I, I think uh, Robert has put his finger right on the key issue. At the end of the day, what we are concerned with is the will and worship of Jesus Christ. 
that should be our primary concern. Uh, everything else is secondary to that. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we, anyone who has had any lengthy experience with a traditional mass knows and feels and will have felt that that connection with uh, God, with the Christ, with the Holy Spirit is very much present in the traditional mass. And that's not surprising given the fact, as I said earlier, uh, it, of its antiquity. It goes back to at least uh, Pope Gelasius I, uh, and in essence goes back to the apostles and indeed to the Jewish temple worship before. It is that old. The idea that one can interfere with, let alone suppress or abrogate such a right is clearly nonsense. And Pope Benedict XVI made that clear in some more pontificate. Now, who is actually res responsible or behind this latest motive mot appropriate? I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether we'll ever find out. Uh, I'm hoping that people like Robert, uh, responsible journalists, will be able to find out more about this. Uh, but the, the, the simple fact of the matter is the traditional Roman rite is not going away, ever. It's not going anywhere. In fact, as John Rao very rightly pointed out, and thank you, John, for that, it's getting stronger day by day. Now, why is that? Is it out of disobedience? No, of course not. It is about our obedience to Christ and the Holy Spirit. It is about uh, what over centuries has formed and been imbibed by the church and by the faithful. And that's not going to go away. And the evidence is there before our eyes. The traditional mass movement is a young person's movement. Everywhere I go, both when I was president of Una Voce and now, wherever I see the traditional mass, it is young people who are attending, young families. Of course, there are old people as well. But what is most noticeable is the very considerable numbers of young people going there. Why? Because they're attracted to it, because they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, and because they feel the antiquity is representative of the traditions of the Catholic faith it's taught to us through the church by the Holy Spirit. So it's not going to go away. So however much uh, anybody may, any human agency may attempt to suppress that right, it's not going away. And uh, as, uh, as Robert also said, and I agree with him, this is understood in some ways better by the Eastern Church and by the Eastern Orthodox than it is by many people in the West, because we have been so saturated with secularism and with uh, 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 disbelief and unbelief that we no longer understand our own history and indeed are, in many respects, trying to destroy it. So we, we, we are seeing and witnessing a great battle between tradition, between truth, between God, between uh, on the one hand, and secularism and hatred of God on the other. So we mustn't be surprised that there are these uh, uh, these 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 battles going on. It's what we've we uh, we've been told in Scripture. We've been told by the Church. We've been told by uh, prophecy from individuals, from saints, and from scholars down the centuries. But we we must comfort ourselves in the knowledge that we are on the right side, and, and we must also be very grateful for the witness, very great witness actually that is being shown not only by people uh, on this uh, conference here, uh, but uh, particularly, of course, His Eminence and His Excellency, but also by each of you uh, and journalists like Robert, uh, scholars like Doc Dr. Rao, Aurelio and Felipe as president of Innovace, and many other people, uh, because we feel it within ourselves and we know with our brains that we are following the right path. There will be obstacles. They will come even from the very highest parts of the church. We mustn't allow that to discourage uh, our, ourselves in our following of Christ and following the traditions of Catholic faith. They're not going away, and we're in the, on the right side and sticking with it. Thank you. And uh, I, I think uh, Cardinal Zen want to say something. Yeah, I, I want to, to go on with what uh, James said. Uh, uh, we have so many young people who love uh, this uh, 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 liturgy. Uh, actually, he mentions uh, uh, the secular uh, secularism. Uh, uh, I would uh, specify that there is a certain uh, uh, rationalism. Uh, 
uh, people now think that uh, we must say everything. Huh? <laughs> but uh, the word uh, now is full of words. Huh? Uh, but um, human beings is not only words. Huh? And uh, we, are, uh, uh, we have a, a, a high level of uh, rationality, which is uh, above the, uh, the, the reason and the words. Huh? Uh, I think uh, uh, it's this uh, uh, spirit, this uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, 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 which brings us to, uh, to the sacred reality. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I remember uh, um, we Chinese, we, 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 have, uh, uh, we should have a, a more difficulty to appreciate uh, the old liturgy because uh, uh, the Latin is more difficult for us. Uh, but you, you can see these young people, they don't, don't know the Latin, but they enjoy this uh, uh, mass because they fear that uh, they are praying, uh, they are adoring uh, uh, the, the, the Lord. Uh, and uh, 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 the, 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 the whole uh, old mass uh, 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 favors such uh, a devotion of spirit uh, of the whole uh, human being. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I like also uh, in a particular way, the, the Gregorian chant. Uh, 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 I think it, it, it's uh, uh, more uh, conformable to the, to the Oriental spirit, uh, uh, maybe to the uh, Asian uh, sensibility, uh, uh, because uh, uh, it, it is really uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, somebody mentioned also uh, the uh, the the, the close uh, uh, the similarity uh, between this old liturgy and uh, the Oriental liturgies. Uh, uh, all this is uh, very important uh, because uh, uh, there are too 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 many words. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I I like uh, uh, also the melody. Uh, the the Gregorian chant is a uh, is a wonderful thing. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm uh, very happy that uh, uh, we uh, we lived in, in that old age for many years. Uh, and I know I, I worked uh, also very hard for the new liturgy. Uh, I taught in the seminary, uh, but uh, I still like uh, the 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 old liturgy. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's no time, but uh, I can sing to you the whole DA series uh, from the first word to the last. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's a wonderful thing. Huh? Uh, there are so many uh, stanzas uh, in, in that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, would, that would be great to hear just a little bit of that. It would be wonderful. Okay, okay. I can sing something. Recordare Jesu pie Quosum causa tue vie Le me perdas illa die where is me sedi stila su rede misti cruce passus tantus labo non sit casus a beautiful prayer huh yeah it's really beautiful but but, but your eminence it's true that uh, you uh you that you want to record the the, the requiem mass uh, then when will be the time your time uh, uh, many Mafia. years uh, you uh, at least they can play the your rec record if they don't want to chant the the gregorian chant is true <laughs> oh yes because uh, i would like to to have uh, this uh, for my funeral huh? <laughs> uh, so if uh, uh, now is a uh, uh, not anybody able to to do that. I can record it. <laughs> play so, it so, so you can play. I but promise it, to come it, and I promise to come and sing, Your Eminence. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't promise because I think I will be dead before. Because uh, I think Your Eminence will have a long long time. As I hope. But I want to ask also Your Eminence to uh, to uh, say something before I go to Bishop Schneider because I have a question for him. But uh, Your Eminence, I want to uh, you share with the people uh, uh, something about your father. 
uh, because uh, we are writing your autobiography and we are talking about your father Vincent, that is uh, Vincenzo, that uh, was a convert uh, to the Catholic faith and then he want to become a priest, but the missionaries tell to him, no, you you cannot become a priest because they know that is not good that a convert uh, uh, can become immediately a priest and there is some danger. And so they, they say, maybe your son will become a priest, so you, and uh, and uh, and then your father that he was very devout that he bring you uh, to five masses every Sunday in Shanghai. Can, can you share about this? Oh sure. Uh, 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 he wanted to, to become a priest, and the mission said, "Oh no, you are neophyte. Huh? Uh, so you get married, and then the, send your your boy to to become priest." <laughs> and so. My father got married, and uh, he had five five girls before me. <laughs> I was the sixth uh, uh, in the family, and uh, the first boy. And so he started bringing me uh, to mass every day, huh? uh, and the five masses on on Sunday. Huh? Uh, but in different churches, huh? uh, it, it was wonderful. Uh, in no way, uh, you know, uh, something tedious. No, very enjoyable. Huh? And uh, that's the origin of my vocation uh, to become a priest. Yeah. And and you and the fifth mass, uh, you say that was the mass of the foreigners, and uh, you criticize. Well, what was the reason you criticize? Uh, the, the the last mass was the high mass, uh, and uh, uh, big crowd also, uh, uh, but mainly uh, uh, foreigners. Uh, uh, as a boy, I I got a little scandalized because. Uh, uh, we oriental people, we we we, we like to, to be kneeling when we pray, huh? <laughs> but the, those people uh, they they just stood uh, there even during the the consecration. <laughs> I, I got a little uh, scandalized, uh, but that's a very minor thing. Huh? But uh, the music was uh, beautiful, huh? and uh, uh, I could enjoy. I, I knowing nothing about the Latin. Huh? But when I learned the Latin, I enjoyed even more uh, because there's so so much uh, uh, gospel uh, in the in all those uh, songs uh, in the, the Gregorian chant. Uh, yeah, so, Thank you, uh, your, your Eminence. And uh, be, be, I, I want to go to the end with uh, Bishop Schneider asking him a question because uh, many people mention about this, and I, I remember you mentioned this on uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, you see someone comment uh, St. Peter's Parish in Shanghai, that it was the parish of Cardinal Zen. So maybe there is someone from Shanghai that is also following our program uh, that is good. So uh, Your Excellency, um, Your Excellency, um, they talk about the Eastern Rite and uh, you say that uh, uh, it's better the, the, the Latin Mass in ecumenical perspective than the, the new mass. You, you mentioned something that, uh, uh, like this in one of your uh, Twitter. Can, can you uh, expand on this? Yes, as already was mentioned here, and Pope Francis in himself stated that uh, the Oriental churches, they stress very much the adoration, the mystery, the theocentric aspect, their liturgy, and we lost something in our liturgy and so this is true, and uh, only a fact, because the old liturgy is, is in the spirit, very close to the oriental liturgies. Yes. And so I remember 2007 when Pope Benedict XVI issued the motto proprio sumorum pontificum in Kazakhstan. We have also a, a, a good community of the Orthodox Russian Orthodox Church, and there came several priests, Orthodox priests, to me to congratulate me. Uh, they were happy, the Orthodox priests, that Pope Benedict restored our traditional liturgy. And also, recently, an Orthodox bishop uh, said to, to my Archbishop and to me, uh, it would be good that you will have in your cathedral a regular Latin traditional mass. So it's an Orthodox bishop. He recommended us and said, "This will unite us more because this is a spirit of which is close to us. This form of of the worship." And so, truly, 
the traditional mass is a true, more ecumenical in this sense, more close to our brothers, the Orthodox, who are very close to us, more than the Protestants. This is a, a beautiful witness of the, the spirit of the church and the faith. And I would add even uh, to, as conclusion uh, that we have always to have hope even in these difficult times, because as our Lord said, the gates of hell will not prevail the church. And I would apply these words to the traditional liturgy. The gates of hell will not prevail against the traditional liturgy and the traditional faith, because this is divine liturgy. The church is divine. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we are going to the end, but I want to leave time for some short comments, uh, short before concluding. So we will start with John uh, C. Rao, please. Uh, yes, just two comments to finish. Um, I would like to have uh, a, an official contest between those people who attend a traditional Latin mass and those who go to an ordinary Novus Ordo in New York City to see who accepts more of Vatican II. Uh, the traditionalists would win hands down because there is so much dissension and refusal to accept church doctrine in the average parish uh, that the contest would be practically non-existent. The other thing I wanted to say is this, the church is the great mother of intelligence and of human reason and those who lose the faith lose their reason as well. So that if you want to look for the mentally ill, all you have to do is look at the secular leaders who have led us through this disaster of the past 18 months. Unfortunately, they are the ones who have the power. They are the ones that dictate what the new normal is. And as a result, they make honestly rational people look as though they're abnormal when the truth is the other way around. Thank you, John. Now I go to uh, Felipe for uh, his short comment, please. Thank you, Aurelio. I, I, I just wanted to, to, to conclude uh, inviting any people who doesn't uh, know the, the, the traditional mass um, that don't lose the, the, the hope. Uh, I, I, I would like to, to, ask you, to ask them to not lose the hope. Uh, this mass is the future. Um, Everything, even though when, when everything seems to be falling apart, this mass is, is, a, is the place where we can <clears throat> replenish our hope and, and, and faith. And also to, to all of the groups of people around the world who, who are struggling to get the mass, and, and I would like to invite them to, to keep fighting, to keep asking for the mass. Uh, this is not uh, a lost case. Uh, and obviously it will take us time and we will need to carry our cross, of course, and we will do, and, but we will remain here. The, the mass is not going anywhere. And it's a, it's a treasure that we should share with as most people as, as possible. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, a short comment also from James. Please go on. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Anything that is said negatively about the traditional mass is, some, is saying something negative about the church for most of 2,000 years and therefore saying something negative about God. Uh, uh, so if people want to be negative about the traditional mass, that's what they are risking. The reality is, as Felipe rightly says, it's not going away. It's been here for most of 2,000 years and it's going to be here for as long as the world exists as are most of the other rites of the, of the Catholic Church. Uh, I'm happy to say that not only do the Orthodox and the Eastern Church understand this, but increasingly a lot of Protestants as, as well. The reality is this is a mass, this is a rite, this is a tradition that is going to continue. It's going to continue because of all the young people who are, at, uh, who are attending, the young families. It's the future, and it's the future because that is the way the Holy Spirit has operated for most of the church's history, and that cannot be denied, cannot be gainsaid, and cannot be suppressed. It does, uh, I'd like also to echo what John Rao has said. The reality is that those who follow the traditional right uh, are not against the Second Vatican Council proper, properly understood. Uh, they're not suggesting that the 
Pauline new right is invalid. They're not suggesting that. They are simply saying that the traditional right, the oldest right in the, in the Christian church, represents and reflects what the Holy Spirit has taught the church for centuries, is not going away. And for the world that we live in, dominated as it is, particularly in the West, uh, by secularism, we need, and that is why so many people are going to it, the traditional mass, the traditional rites, because it gives us the direct contact with the divine, with the Holy Spirit. And that is always going to be the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if it's Robert also want to add something to end. Uh, Cardinal Zen said there are too many words. So I would agree with him and say we must rekindle our faith, our hope, and our love. If there's any way that we are rigid and uncharitable, we should become charitable and filled with the fire of the love of Christ. And then I would say, let us be silent and know that there is a God and he is God. And this knowledge is innate to the human heart. We, and even in every country around the world, including China, when people sense this, they move towards this. Thank you. And uh, I want to uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, to conclude, uh, I, if, I, don't know, I don't know if I may ask uh, uh, Cardinal Zen if you can give us a special blessing to all the people that, uh, and uh, of course, Bishop Schneider, uh, all the people that are following and that, uh, that uh, are fighting for the good cause. And uh, it would be good if you, you can give us a special blessing. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, let us uh, pray uh, all the holy people, uh, all the saints, especially uh, our martyrs. Uh, I remember so many uh, martyrs in China during the, the recent uh, persecution. Uh, they have uh, their faith nourished by the old liturgy. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope now they are in heaven and... and uh, they are praising God uh, in the same spirit, in the continuity which they have lived uh, during their life, uh, and they pray for us uh, so that uh, uh, we can really uh, go back uh, to that strong faith uh, and uh, so to also have their spirit to, uh, to face uh, the challenges uh, of today, and uh, especially in China or in many other places, uh, to be ready even uh, to give their life uh, uh, for God, uh, which they they worship, uh, uh, which they love, uh, and uh, uh, they uh, get into so uh, intimacy uh, with the help of the old liturgy. Uh, so uh, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for following this program. Uh, I want to tell you that on this Friday, we will have a program on the sacred. Uh, is sacred lost in Italian? Uh, so I will give you the information. Please follow us in uh, Telegram uh, in my channel. Uh, I thank all the guests. I thank Cardinal uh, Zen. I thank Bishop Schneider, uh, I thank uh, Robert uh, Mohinihan, uh, Felipe Alanis Suarez, James Bogle, uh, John C. Rao for their comments, uh, insight and analysis that were very helpful and I hope uh, that uh, everyone uh, was edified as I was. So please wait one second after I finish the program so we can say goodbye uh, in private and uh, in the meantime I thank the people that have followed this program. Thank you and see you to the next one. <laughs>